morning. It's Monday, August 21st. You know, when I was growing up, newspapers were very important because we didn't have a lot of entertainment venues. We had newspapers, we had the movies, we had radio. So you were dependent on one of those things to get you entertained. So newspapers were very important. And everybody who went to work in the morning where I lived, They walked down the street to the 183rd Street and Jerome Avenue Station, and right on the corner of Walton and 183rd was a newsstand. And the gentleman who ran that newsstand put his papers out early in the morning, 6 o'clock or so, and he put a little cigar box there, and people would pick out the newspaper that they wanted, and they would throw two cents in, because that's what a newspaper cost in those days, two cents or three cents. And maybe one or two of them cost a nickel, but I don't remember. But I can tell you the list of newspapers that was there, like the Daily Mirror and the New York Telegram and the Journal American and the Yiddish newspapers, the the Tog and the Farberts, and we had the Bronx Home News and the Brooklyn Times Union and the Herald Tribune. And let's not forget the Daily Worker. That was the paper that leaned left because every paper had a leaning. They had right-wingers and left-wingers. And you picked the newspaper of your choice. And many people read different newspapers, a different one in the morning and a different one in the evening on the way home from work. And all of those papers are gone. Bartek, gone. And what we have now in our current newspaper world is the Wall Street Journal, we have Newsday, we have the New York Times, we have the Post, the New York Post, and we do have the Daily News. But all those other newspapers are gone. And the reason for all of that is because TV has expanded. You can get your information anywhere. You got your mobile phone. You got everything you need. You can get information. So newspapers are kindly sort of died a horrible death. And why am I talking about newspapers? Talking about an event that took place in Kansas. The police raided a local newspaper in a small Kansas town. And the act was so out of sight, so crazy, that it prompted emails from friends around the country who were concerned about that little town and their newspaper. And according to the article I read, we should all be concerned about this. And this is what happened. The local police and the county sheriff's deputies came into those offices, seized computers, seized their service, seized their cell phones, And this is a newspaper that had a seven-member staff in Marion County, Kansas. And the name of the newspaper was, of course, the Marion County Record. And they searched the home of the publication's owner and a semi-retired editor and a city councilwoman. What were the police doing? It's not really clear. Supposedly, this had to do with how a document about a local resident got into the paper and whether the person's privacy was violated or not. But the real issue may be tensions between the way officials in the town are covered in the paper. So are they raiding the newspaper because the newspaper has bad things to say about the officials in the town? All newspapers when I grew up had an opinion. And if you didn't like the opinion, you didn't didn't read that paper. Are these people so thin-skinned that they would raid a newspaper office just because the newspaper may have written a couple of articles that pointed out the problems that the local government was having? Because newspapers historically are watchdogs. 
They watch everything. They inform readers about the actions of their public servants, which creates an atmosphere in some worlds as being unhealthy. But in other worlds, it's healthy. There should be tension between the two opposing parties. People should be on their toes. Those who are running in public office should not be afraid to have something appear in the newspaper, providing the newspaper is telling the truth. Now, if these politicians in the local town in Kansas were upset, they probably had good reason to be upset. They probably did something wrong. So this newspaper, which has a circulation of about 4,000, and its owner has had a long career in journalism, both as a reporter and as a professor at the University of Illinois, and his father worked at the newspaper for half a century before him, and his father was the top editor, and the family bought the newspaper later on, and along with two other newspapers that they bought. So I have to believe that the newspaper knew what they were doing. And the issue in question had to do with a copy of an official letter that was sent to one of the newspaper's reporters, and it was sent via Facebook. Now, that could be a big mistake, because you shouldn't be sending things like that via Facebook. The letter basically contained information on how to get your driver's license restored after a drunk driving incident. And the interesting thing about that particular resident is that she now wants to open a drinking establishment, a liquor serving establishment. And the letter had been given to a city councilwoman with the apparent intent of affecting the decision, which I guess was not the right thing to do, interfering in a public court case, so to speak. So in any event, the letter was forwarded by the newspaper. And the resident is claiming that their right to privacy was violated by the newspaper. And that's what caused the raid. Now, I believe that underneath, when you're raiding the newspaper, you have more reason than that to go in and take down the whole place. They removed all of the computer equipment from the newspaper. They removed a lot of things that the newspaper needed on a daily basis to continue in business. And so right now the newspaper is having great difficulty because of the search and seizure of all their tools. And that's very rare. Newspapers don't get raided. They don't get their tools taken away. So I believe there's something going on between the newspaper, the police department in that small town, the woman who started this whole thing with her drunk driving incident. So right now, the newspaper is having great difficulty trying to publish its next edition without its computers, without its servers, without its files that contain many stories needed, without the pictures, without the layout templates, Without the public notices, without the ads, it's a disaster for this small paper. We must recognize that newspapers are not doing as well as they used to because of all the action that can take place on the Internet and on other mobile devices. And I think that the police department in Kansas owes them a big apology. But we'll see what happens in this small hometown. Because newspapers are there to educate and to make the community a better place. I leave you with that this morning. Have a great day. Bye.